what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out top 10 shortest wwe matches of 2021 there are some uh short matches that have happened this year the most noticeable one is bianca belair losing in a few seconds after becky lynch returns i thought that was just kind of messed up for bianca belair's title run i don't know why wwe likes to do these type of things especially with wrestlers that they a are pushing or b they're trying to you know create a story as if these are viable champions just to have them to lose in a couple seconds it just it takes the believability out of it for me personally unless it just makes sense to do it that way but we're gonna check this out appreciate all love and support road to 70k and let's get right into this thing man from money in the bank cash-ins to downright squash matches it's time to now look at the 10 shortest wwe <sighs> matches of 2021 be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on facebook for exclusive lists and also check out our tiktok Number 10, Roman Reigns vs Daniel Bryan, 1 minute and 36 seconds. One of the most acclaimed feuds of 2021 has been the feud between Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan. The duo feuded during the first half of 2021 mm -hmm. and the two were even involved in a main event match at WrestleMania 37 which also involved WWE Hall of Famer Edge. The feud between Reigns and Bryan truly escalated at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. One of the top matches on the pay-per-view was an Elimination Chamber match between Brian, Jey Uso, Cesaro, Kevin Owens, King Corbin, and Sami Zayn. And the winner of this match will get an immediate 1v1 uh, match against... I remember that. Yeah. I remember that. So pretty much after the Elimination Chamber match, he would end up fighting... They would end up fighting the WWE, uh, WWE Universal Champion, which was like, well, wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? He's already, you know, bruised up, you know, you know injured damn near from having a grueling match and now you gotta fight the, the universal champion it was a good way to build up sympathy for daniel bryan as the underdog babyface against reigns for the universal title but following a grueling 35 minute chamber match bryan would come out victorious and the chances of him defeating reigns yeah. were slim to none once Reigns made his entrance, Brian actually showed signs of life. He would lock Reigns in the yes lock and it looked like for a brief second that mm -hmm. Reigns was actually going to tap out and Brian was going to win the title. Yeah. Reigns eventually managed to fight out of the submission move and he would lock in a guillotine choke on Brian who then passed out, giving Reigns the submission victory. The match would end in just 1 minute 36 seconds, making it one of the shortest universal title matches in history. Number 9, Karrion Cross vs Jackson Riker, 1 minute and 35 seconds. Oh, damn. And the main roster call up a Karrion Cross was a massive failure on the part of WWE. This they decided to strip away everything that made Cross special on NXT. The entire presentation oh, of his character. That fucking mask was just. just awful. That's a mask that someone would wear in their sex torture dungeon. What the fuck was. Whoever thought that mask made sense. And the straps and everything. You. What? What? No. Oh. It was drastically altered and they even took away Scarlet from his side. Cross struggled to get over on the main roster as there was a clear case of fans not knowing what his character or identity was even supposed to be. And take for instance Cross's match against Jackson Riker in September. Both superstars were heels, meaning that the match was met with utter silence from the live audience as they had zero idea who to root for. Mm -hmm. The match would end up being one of the shortest matches on television in 2021 Damn. as it ended in just 1 minute and 35 seconds after Cross applied the cross jacket on Riker for the submission victory. Even though he managed to squash Riker, Cross would end up getting released from the WWE in November yep. after it was reported that Vince McMahon had given up on the former two-time NXT champion. Number 8, the Queen's Crown 2021 first round matches of Shayna Baszler vs Dana Brooke and Carmella vs Liv Morgan. When WWE announced that a Queen's Crown tournament would be taking place this year, fans were thrilled that the talented women were getting this huge opportunity. The Queen's Crown tournament would act as the women's version of the King of the Ring, but unfortunately, the tournament completely flopped. Mm -hmm. The women's matches in the tournament were hardly given any time and fan favorites such as Liv Morgan were eliminated in the first round. One of the shortest matches in the tournament was in fact 1 minute and 40 seconds and saw Carmella defeat Morgan to advance to the next yeah. round. Another People were definitely uh, disappointed by that as well. I First round matchup saw Shayna Baszler defeat Dana Brooke in just one minute and 25 seconds. 
criticism was directed towards WWE for never really caring about the tournament in any way. In fact, the total combined match length for all matches in the tournament was just under 20 minutes in length. That's, Number 7, Biggie vs Bobby Lashley, 1 minute and 15 seconds. That's definitely bad. In September of 2021, WWE and Biggie announced ahead of time that the New Day member was going to cash in his Money in the Bank briefcase on Raw. This was mainly done for a ratings grab, but it was also a smart creative decision that made Biggie look incredibly strong as a babyface. Mm -hmm. A WWE superstar giving notice that they were going to cash in a Money in the Bank had been extremely rare and has only happened on a handful of occasions. Yep. Following Lashley's match against Randy Orton, Biggie would come down to the ring to officially cash in the briefcase, and to the credit of Lashley, he managed to put up a decent fight. He would even perform a spear on Biggie, but this was only good enough for a two count. Eventually, Biggie was able to execute a big ending to win his first WWE title in 1 minute and 15 seconds. Which makes sense on a cash-in. You know, this match is going to be short. They usually cash in after someone's already had a match. So it makes sense. Number 6, Karrion Cross versus Jeff Hardy, 50 seconds. Jeff Hardy is one of the most popular WWE mm -hmm. stars of all time. Still. He's maintained this popularity throughout every era of WWE programming, but his booking and presentation throughout 2021 has left fans feeling disappointed. Hardy throughout this year has been mainly used to put over newer talent, but fans have felt that Hardy still has what it takes to be a main event level talent, but WWE clearly have other ideas. In August, Hardy would go one on one with Karrion Cross, and following a backstage assault from Cross, Hardy would be squashed by Cross in just 50 seconds. Now, the issue with his booking throughout 2021 is that he's failed to look remotely credible, mm -hmm. meaning that when WWE decided to use Hardy to put over a newer, younger talent, it has little impact or consequence. Number 5, Natalia vs Shayna Baszler, 35 seconds. Now, the booking of now, it's crazy because when Karrion Cross debuted, he ended up losing to Hardy, and it was just like, okay, and now you want to have him attack him and, and brutalize him, but it's like... If you were going to do that, you should have did that from the jump. You know what I'm saying? Shayna Baszler has been heavily criticized throughout 2021. This criticism has never been more prominent than it was following WWE's decision to book Shayna Baszler to lose in just 35 seconds to Natalia on SmackDown in April. The finish of the match came when Natalia counted a pin attempt into her own roll-up, and although the commentators acted like it was an upset, it didn't make for pleasant viewing. Number 4, The Miz vs Drew McIntyre. Shayna should not be losing. <laughs> She shouldn't have been losing. She should have been at the top of division. The only time she should have lost is to, like, someone that's at the top of division. Like, come on, man. Like, Shayna Baszler is legit a competitor, a legit fighter. Could really hurt some people. And you just had her lose and, you know, in silly fashions or have her in feuds with Alexa Bliss and her superpowers. Cringe, man. 28 seconds. There may not be a better opportunity to cash in the Money in the Bank briefcase than following a brutal Elimination Chamber match. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what The Miz did following Drew McIntyre's successful defense of the WWE title. Following Drew's courageous victory inside the chamber, Bobby Lashley decided to come down to the ring and ambush him. This led to The Miz picking up the scraps mm -hmm. and executing a skull-crushing finale to win the title for the second time in his career. This also marked the second time that The Miz had won the WWE title by cashing in the Money in the Bank briefcase. He had previously done this on the Raw following following Survivor Series back in 2010. Yep. Number 3, The Miz vs Bobby Lashley, 27 seconds. <laughs> thanks to Bobby Lashley's involvement in The Miz winning the WWE <laughs> title at the... And then it just, it just doesn't make sense. You have him literally be a transitional champion to get the title on Bobby, which was like, well, what was the point of giving him money in the bank? Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, The Miz reluctantly agreed to give Lashley a one-on-one -on -one match for the title. This would take place on the March 1st edition of Raw, but when the bell rang, Miz simply ran away and got counted out. This meant that the match ended in a lousy 27 seconds. But luckily for Lashley, a rematch would be set for later in the evening, and this time it would be a lumberjack match and Lashley would be victorious, winning the title for the first time. No Which was cool. I'm all for Bobby Lashley winning. I just... The road to him getting there was convoluted. You have the Miz cash in, only have it for like a week or something like that, a few days, if that. And then you have him lose it to Bobby, which is like, then what was the point? What was the absolute point of doing that? You might as well give him the briefcase to somebody else that could have benefited from it. He literally wasted the briefcase to only have the title for a few days. To only drop it in 
glorious fashion to Bobby Lashley. I don't think anyone has a problem with Bobby winning. It just had a problem. It just it just seemed like a convoluted way to get the belt on him. Number two, Bianca Belair versus oh, Becky Lynch at 26 seconds. Just... One of the featured matches advertised for SummerSlam was a WrestleMania 37 main event rematch between Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks. However, due to unforeseen circumstances, this never took place, and instead WWE announced that Carmella would be taking Sasha's place. But this was until Becky Lynch made her grand return to WWE programming for over a year away. Becky and Bianca would agree to face each other in an absolute dream match for the SmackDown yeah. Women's title, but this would be a decision that Bianca would come to regret. Becky instantly connected with a forearm and followed it up with a manhandle slam to win the SmackDown Women's title in just 26 seconds. And number one. I'm sorry. The booking of that was so stupid. It's so goddamn stupid. It does not make a lick of sense. It just don't. It uh, There's nothing in that whole segment that anyone... If you're a fan of WWE, makes sense to do. That just don't. I wouldn't, if you didn't want Becky, obviously you don't want Becky to take a loss for her coming back. You don't want it to end in a DQ. I get it, they wanted to create a moment. And that's cool. But at the same time, you buried someone that has won the championship that you're trying to build. She, granted, people still like Bianca. And they, they like her work, so she's still good in the fans' eyes. But at the same time, it's like, bro, that doesn't... Why would she just lose like that? In 26 seconds, like, what? She was still fresh, and, oh, well, she got surprised. Like, bro, I, come on now. That just... Oh, man. The logic sometimes in WWE creative does not exist. If you want it, you could have had Becky be there. You could have had her show up probably at the end of Carmella's match to set up a potential feud. That would have been better than having her. Like, bro, what the? Nikki Ash versus Charlotte Flair, oh, 13 man. seconds. And Nikki Ash winning the Money in the Bank contract came as a huge surprise to fans. Nikki's gimmick was yeah. relatively new, and it was unclear if the gimmick was popular enough with fans yeah. for the WWE to give her the prestigious Money in the Bank briefcase. But nevertheless, they did, and Nikki wasted no time cashing it in on the Raw following the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. As following Charlotte's match with Rhea Ripley, Nikki would officially cash in the Money in the Bank briefcase and defeat Charlotte in just 13 seconds to win the Raw Women's title for the first time in her career. But there you have it, folks. Ten of the yeah, and then that really went nowhere either. I didn't really buy into her gimmick like that either, me personally. I know some people did. I just didn't fucking really care. So, yeah. Some of these made sense storyline-wise, and some of these were creative blunders that... I, for the life of me, WWE continuously continues to make. I'm sure next year there are going to be some short matches. Because there always is that don't make a lick of sense. That ultimately kills someone's character and or momentum. But comment down below. Let me know. What was the worst match from this list that really just had you like, yo, what the hell was this? Why is WWE doing this? Why was this even a match? For me, I have to give it to... Bianca, that that literally kind of dropped down SummerSlam for me because they, I get it, her title reign wasn't the best, but you're still trying to build her up and you have her lose in that way was kind of like, what the, what the hell? You know what I'm saying? It just kind of sucked. It just, it meant everything that she worked for at WrestleMania, that amazing match at WrestleMania, all that other stuff, it don't matter. Becky's here, give her the belt. Like, what? That, to me, that was just kind of like a, it just, it dropped it down, dropped her character down for me personally. Glad she, you know, still beloved in the fans' eyes, but that was just, that was just dumb, man. But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 70K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.